Auburn and I worked on sustainable alternatives uh, in specific regards to graphics. So mostly things like substrates, vinyls, everything you associate with stuff that you see rather than like touch or feel. Um, so it kind of, I divided it up into a couple of different sections, uh, print collateral, inks and papers, large format printing, digital printing, UV latex, uh, the types of inks, and then applications. So that talks a lot about centerboard alternatives, uh, which is, um, as you'll kind of like learn, not exactly a great material uh, in terms of sustainability, and then other considerations. Um, so I start with a bit of preliminary information, uh, mostly uh, targeted towards um, people who not, are like not really sure of the terminology, because when I first came in uh, learning about it, I was also um, a bit confused when I was like, oh, what are VOCs? Um, so VOCs, uh, volatile organic compounds, uh, are compounds of carbon uh, that evaporate. Um, and so, for example, when you're producing things like PVC um, or, you know, using certain inks, uh, the printing process or the process of creating it uh, releases uh, greenhouse uh, greenhouse gases that isn't exactly great for global warming. Um, so the trend uh, in most of these materials that I was looking for is materials that are PVC free uh, because PVC is an incredibly toxic plastic and alternative plastics, uh, even though they are still plastic, uh, can be recycled uh, and are often much more uh, like less carcinogenic than PVC. Um, two popular ones you might see when you go like to buy things at the grocery store would be PP and HDPE. Uh, so what do you look out for when you're looking for eco-friendly or sustainable products? Uh, I would say I tend uh, to mostly look for certifications. Um, these aren't all of them. Uh, you know, there's um, quite a few more, like for example, uh, LEED, which is used for buildings. Uh, but these are kind of the ones that I have seen when I'm looking for products. So if it's paper or wood, it would be the FSD certifications. Um, EP would be for uh, products such as printers. And then ULs, uh, Eco Logo Green Guard, that would be talking about um, like also substrates. Uh, so print collateral, inks and papers. Um, in regards to ink, uh, the um, traditional inks that we think about, solvent inks, uh, use petroleum-based carriers. Uh, there are, are a couple different types of carriers um, that uh, are a bit more eco-friendly. Uh, some of the ones that we kind of know uh, that are uh, good for general graphics and printing, but not exactly great for large format, uh, mostly because it wouldn't uh, be it wouldn't be dur as durable. So one that I like to think about and I like to use is vegetable oil ink. Um, it's already being used for stuff like newspapers. Um, it's not just uh, soy, but also other vegetable based inks. And so uh, this is great because it's great for the health, but printers um, doesn't release a lot of VOCs and you can get like quite vibrant colors as well with it. Um, I, I've been trying to see if we can start using it for things like collateral. Um, this one is a bit more of a speculative one uh, as it only comes in black, uh, but algae ink is also mentioned, uh, I believe, in the blog that Rula and Heather wrote. Um, it's net negative, uh, which is fantastic uh, because we love, you know, products that are able to not only like be carbon neutral, but also sequester carbon. Uh, it could be things that we look into, um, but, but it would mostly again be like for marketing and graphics and collateral. Uh, in terms of paper, uh, FSE, Forest, uh, don't quite remember, Forest Stewardship Council uh, certified paper. Um, so the three that uh, they use is 100%, which is from virgin material from certified forests, uh, recycled, recycled fiber, and mix, which is a mix of both. Um, so typically I like to use, uh, personally, I like to look for recycled. Um, so printing, there's a couple different methods of printing used. Uh, I would say uh, digital printing versus offset. So digital printing uh, is kind of what you think of when you think of your standard office printer, it prints it directly on. Um, it's definitely more cost efficient and timely when it comes for smaller print runs, anything less than like a thousand thing or you know a thousand pieces I would say is digital. Um, and then offset, which is better for like larger print runs, uh, I'm slightly less, if you can, Auburn, if you can chime in, I'm slightly less familiar uh, with like 
offset printing mostly because I haven't done a lot of it. And also um, if there's a difference between like if direct printing is digital or offset neither so yeah so digital digital like you said it's um you don't have a plate so in pr traditional printing you'll have something like a plate that transfers an image you know that, that goes from ink to the to your paper and you usually have a plate that has kind of the image burned into it and that will transfer that onto the, pa the paper um so offset uses ink um, and so, uh, whereas digital, it's it's kind of more toner, I guess, like a, something like a toner. Um, but so usually runs that are two fifty or more generally are offset um, because they could run. So um, so offset, um, you're going to get more consistency in the past, although it's changing, like your Pantone inks were always done with offset because they were actually inks. Um, and so, um, but yeah, there's like, there's usually a polymer plate involved. So, I mean, and, you know, it can also be metal, but usually it's a polymer plate involved. Um, and yeah, they just, it's, it's using, it's just a difference in ink. I think with digital printing, um, you can have more energy efficiency with the actual machine because uh, it's kind of an all-in-one type of thing. Um, so something like the HP Indigo, which is like a, um, it, ha it uses both more sustainable inks and it's energy efficient. Yeah exactly um and then there's also like certain papers that are really compatible with it um and it's great for short run um for short run stuff like under a thousand probably for this yeah uh and so this is when we kind of move on to, to large format um so i'll start with i think latex inks um latex being water-based um so it doesn't require extra ventilation better for the workers' health. Um, so latex uh, is an ink that kind of sits on top of the uh, media. And so I believe that means it's better for recyclability because it can be de-inked off of the substrate. Uh, I would say it's- dries inert. And when it dries, it's inert, like it's, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I've seen it, uh, again, like I have slightly less experience uh, with actual like materials um on large formats so uh this is a lot of this is from what i've like gathered through research um but it states that it's more versatile as it can work on coated and uncoated papers but also um it's flexible um uv inks uh would be better suited for a lot of our more rigid panels um the ink is cured and it dries under uv light hence uv inks and releases uh, less vocs um, and it also, uh, if it's like a good curable ink, it wouldn't also have need extra coatings or protectants, uh, which could also release extra VOCs in the process. Um, so I think this is where the bulk of it, uh, the bulk of the research comes in, as Auburn and I were kind of struggling to find a good alternative to Centraboard, which is the uh, most popular and also PVC based uh, substrate. Um, so we'll start with wall graphics. Uh, vinyl, uh, which is most commonly constructed out of PVC, but alternative plastic vinyls exist. Um, so PP, which is uh, designated as number five recycling, um, it has a bit lower impact compared to PVC uh, when it comes to um, a, being used as a plastic. Uh, but there's also stuff like Carnegie's or uh, Sorel or Modulex and other uh, types of vinyls that are PVC free. Um, and again, I'm not sure about the durability of PVC free vinyl or other plastics or like how durable they are, because I think maybe like some of the ones used in Port Discovery are and were PVC. Like, I don't know the durability of them compared to each other. It can be dirt. They're just I think like Rulo is mentioning, I think the downsides, a couple of things. Um, it's about demand, right? So the mm -hmm. price is higher because there is not high demand. The price can be higher and they're not usually stocked at. Um, like, for example, some of our vendors, our printers will have kind of vinyls or whatever they just kind of always have in mm -hmm. stock. And so these would have to be often special ordered. Um, so there's some challenges with that. But 
it can I, I in my at least with the PVC free wallpaper it's just as if not more durable it's fine yeah yeah it comes up uh with uh with a uh, wallpaper that I found online as well Digiscape um latex saturated non-woven wall covering um this is a wall covering that it's synthetic uh it uses HP latex inks which means it can be reused um, and it's also PVC free and comes in a large variety of texture and finishes that I got some samples for for the office. Uh, and so this is in regards to fabric. Uh, so either printing on fabric or anything that would be fiber based uh, in an exhibit. Um, Envirotex fabrics are made with um, post consumer recycled yarn. Uh, so uh, or Reprieve, which is another company that does recycling of yarn. Um, it comes from a variety of uh, waste streams. Uh, which I think also includes water bottles, hence the tag, which I think is pretty fantastic because um, I believe a lot of uh, typical uh, water bottles aren't really that recyclable from what I from what I hear. Um, we also ordered some Ultraflex PVC free substrates, uh, specifically fabric, um, Bioflex cotton, uh, which is uh, made of a natural cotton material. It's more biodegradable, uh, but it's only recommended for indoor use, and I'm assuming like a, it being fire treated will also change um, like its biodegradability. Uh, and then we also have fabric tack uh, in the studio, which I've tried removing, you know, remounting many, many times. And I would say it's it's pretty good. Um, it hadn't left any residue. I put it on like tables, cabinets, windows, counters. Uh, but again, you know, it looks pretty good when it's printed on. Uh, and but my experience with it is mostly like putting it on the wall and seeing if it sticks. Can I, can I ask um, if our vendors, the, t the vendors we typically would use, would print on some of these things or like how easily do, do we make suggestions and um, if we're working with somebody like I know for, you know, whether it's fabric mm -hmm. and we would ask them, have you printed on this before? How um, how much does that inhibit us from going this route? Because our, print, yeah. our printers don't do won't do this. There is are a issue? couple of vendors that I reached out to who do print. Uh, most of the one closest to us um, locally is a uh, Photo Works Group (PWG). I heard from Bernard uh, and I contacted them that they did a they did a uh, I think like a presentation to us a while back about specifically them printing on synthetic fabric um, and also them being able to print on uh, some of the reprieve fabric. Um, so this uh, specific fabric is through a company called Fisher Textiles, but I do know that they're able to print on this, um, like recycled fabric. Uh, in terms of Ultraflex, they just supply the substrates. So those things would have to be special order. And I would, probably mostly recommend these for things where we would have to do like a really large order, like a large exhibit, um, just because we would have to ask the printer to both order this and also figure printing on it. Uh, but the Fabri-Tac, it uh, is able to be printed with a lot of general uh, inks that most printers would have in stock, solvent, eco, UV, and latex. And then, uh, so then it comes to like some more laminates, uh, which I would say, like, I haven't really seen used to often. I guess it would be kind of similar to a vinyl, um, but there's a couple ones that I was interested in uh, on Avery Den Denison and laminates. Uh, I would say specifically that second one uh, uh, wraps. So this would be great for wrapping. Uh, if you'd want to like wrap, a, for example, like a wood panel and then unwrap it. Um, so, their PVC free wrapping film uh, is digitally printable um, and it can also stick on textured surfaces like brick, cement, and cinder block, which I thought was particularly interesting. Uh, but these would also have to be like, you'd have to contact the printer to see if they're able to print on stuff like this and it would have to be a special order. Uh, there's also another over laminate. Uh, the only like photo I could really find on the website went on like a boat. So I would say, yeah, if you want to put something on the water, um, that would look probably pretty good. And I would assume probably pretty expensive. Uh, they also have some stuff for signage, wayfinding, um, like a, just um, a PVC free plotter film. 
Um, great for like long-term vinyl applications if we're doing like buildings. And then lastly would be stuff for uh, actual like actual substrates. So beyond just the wall graphics, uh, like stuff like the board, which is already pretty commonly produced. Um, I have seen this mostly used for like low touch uh, stuff like trade shows. Um, it's 100% paper. Um, it's recyclable. It's pretty flat. Like think of it as like, I would say like a very, very rigid mat board. Um, it comes in a couple of different textures and like you can see it's like pretty good for temporary setups, but maybe also for stuff that's far away that wouldn't necessarily be touched or handled. Um, and then there's a couple alternatives coming up to uh, Cintra board. So this is Falcon board. Um, it also goes by uh, a different name. Um, I, I, the name Dufelite, yeah, Dufelite. Um, it has this very distinct honeycomb pattern. So it would have to be something that you talk to the client about, see if it matches their aesthetic needs. Um, but if they're willing to spend more money on like sustainability, uh, but don't really want the appearance, um, it can also be edge, you know, like edge banded. Uh, so it looks more like your classic center board. Um, but it is 100% recyclable after, after the fact. Um, and this one's also, uh, I've also heard people in the office bring it up as a material uh, that's already being used. Uh, so that's definitely, this is something that would be great uh, for something that's a little bit more touch heavy. Um, so dye bond, which is an aluminum composite material. Um, it does have plastic. Uh, however, um, using a separation system, they're able to kind of like uh, separate the aluminum and plastic and thus make it recyclable. Uh, pretty great for like thin signage. I would say, I would assume it would be pretty light um, based off of based off of the way it looks. And then another one is one that uh, we were we got samples of uh, the Gilman uh, the Gilman Plastics uh, Infinity Board. I would say it's a bit less attractive just because it. You know, it's not a recycled material, but it is recyclable. Uh, but if we're looking for something and it's like not something that can be uh, like they don't supply printing, just the material. Uh, but, you know, if a client happens to have it, uh, it, it is pretty it is recyclable. So it is like a, a slightly better, a slightly step up uh, to using PVC. And then this one is a PP polypropene, so recyclable as well. Um, and so this is appropriate for both indoor outdoor usage. It, it, you know, it comes in like a pretty large variety of thicknesses um, and it does kind of look like metal, but it is plastic. So not, not quite sure uh, why it looks like that though. But again, it's like, it has that same like very distinctive uh, edge that Falcon board has. Um, and then the pretty traditional uh, solution for, you know, thinking of something, making something sustainable would be making it out of wood, vinyl wrapping, painted boards, um, some of it will maintain that wood texture, which might be attractive to some clients. Uh, and so when you're looking for stuff like this, uh, thinking of like boards, uh, boards are, like the boards will typically use plywood, OSB, MDF, I think uh, would be like sawdust and or like wood that is, uh, I think like formed together. Uh, so trying to look for ones without formaldehyde, mm. um, which is a toxic material and then Outdoor signage, there's Stormboard, which I think is very interesting uh, just because it has a very distinctive look, as you can see, because it's made from pl recycled plastic. Uh, so it, its main aim is to replace wood boards, mostly because um, it doesn't uh, it doesn't warp over time. And it comes in two different lines, a high impact one, which would be great if you're someone uh, looking to help um, like to have a sign that is resistant to graffiti. Um, so I know like for a lot of like outdoor historic sites, maybe that want a sign that's resistant, um, you would probably, uh, you know, try and say like, oh yeah, like this one would be super easy to clean off if someone graffitis it. Uh, while SF is one that's better for indoor use and it can also be like wrapped in laminate to kind of look like any material you'd want it to be. Um, and this is the pretty classic HTPE plastic. Uh, which I think you kind of like see when you go out to trails, parks, uh, these are like the, the kind of dual colored signs that they have already. Um, and they are recyclable, so that's fantastic. Uh, but unfortunately it's difficult to print. So you kind of just limit are limited to the color of the board. And then there is Smart X foam boards, which I don't believe we got a sample of, um, but again, it is a 100% recyclable board. 
um, that could also be used for like medium term outdoor signage. And then I also mentioned uh, Greencast Acrylics, which uh, is acrylic that is recycled and recyclable. Uh, so it's very customizable, it comes in any color you can imagine. Uh, and then I think I'd like to leave off this uh, presentation with the idea um, of, I think like, and I also maybe mentioned this a little bit in the blog post, but when switching over to eco-friendly, uh, I guess the impulse is to kind of think that you can design like the way you normally do and then implement it at the end. But a lot of these materials have very, um, have kind of like peculiarities like falcon board and storm board um, that would kind of require you to start uh, thinking about designing green from the start. Uh, I kind of think of it as peanut butter and jelly um, that you don't typically like put assemble peanut butter and jelly and smush it together before you spread it on the bread, unless you're one of those people who has like the peanut butter with the jelly. So it's pretty important to consider the materiality and limitations of the substrate before you start designing. Um, 